Anyway, uh, Akinori, it's your turn. Thank you. Um, two previous speakers uh, discussed uh, development finance, but uh, I think I'm going to speak about world economy, main thrust of your uh, paper. Uh, let me begin with the U.S. economy. I hope you remember that I was optimistic about the uh, prospect for U.S. economic slowdown a year ago. Yeah, yeah. I continue to be optimistic, and the U.S. economy is now at a full employment. On top of this, uh, the fiscal pol policy stimulus that has been incorporated um, in the Inflation Reduction Act, strange name, but, uh, and CHIPS Act is materializing in terms of uh, expansion and business investment in the U.S. Uh, the stimulative tax effect will continue in 2024 and beyond. 2024 is, of course, a presidential election year under the split Congress. So there will be no new fiscal initiatives. But uh, there continues to be stimulative effects of the past legislation. In light of both the full employment at present and fiscal stimulus in the pipeline, I think the Federal Reserve will be cautious about monetary easing. Um, they may begin to lower the federal fund rate target in 2024, of course, but perhaps only to the extent consistent with uh, increases in the unemployment rate. Uh, in other words, no preemptive easing, uh, but uh, cautious easing or uh, measured pace easing is likely. As long as fiscal policy is expansionary and monetary policy cautious, uh, that means high IS curve, investment savings curve, and high liquidity curve, LM curve, uh, in terms of Mandel Fleming's framework, uh, economic growth will continue with relatively high real interest rates and a strong US dollar on exchange markets. <laughs> Stock prices will fluctuate perhaps within a range where monetary tightness, relative tightness, put, uh, puts a lid on price earning ratio, and economic growth supports return on equity. Okay. Let me segue to the Chinese economy. Uh, we all know that the Chinese economy is under a few structural adjustment pressures, uh, for example, a burst of property bubbles and debt overhang, communist policy of tightening grips with business, uh, actually more widely over civil society in general, which is stifling, uh, stifling entrepreneurship in China, and lastly, an unfavorable demography. Uh, at the same time, China's economic slowdown has been accentuated by the so-called silicon cycle, which goes up with IT-related production in the global, global market for two years and goes down for two years on average. 2023 was a dis you know, declining period, and now the cycle seems to be hitting the bottom. Uh, we heard the same story in previous uh, sessions uh, by uh, semiconductor experts, actually. Uh, just like Japan experienced cyclical ups and downs uh, during the first decade after the burst of property and stock bubbles, the Chinese economy will also show cyclical ups and downs even when structural adjustment pressures put a damper on its trend growth. Uh, in 2024, the silicon cycle will turn favorable for China's economic growth from a cyclical viewpoint. It is also the case for Korea and other Asian uh, economies, as well as Germany, all of which, uh, you know, manufacturing is a key industry, therefore uh, sensitive to the silicon cycle. Uh, with respect to finance, I have a lot to say, but. Uh, Perhaps I would uh, come back if you're interested in uh, for uh, the following session. And also many people are interested in the similarity and differences between uh, Chinese burst of the bubble now and the burst of the bubble in Japan in the uh, 1990s. But um, I defer the discussion also at a later stage. Open up for a lot of questions to you, <laughs> if I understand. If thank, you are interested. Thank yes. you very much. Uh, can I add to all what you say, which is absolutely true, 
that the, the US prosper, apparent prosperity is really based also on a big current account deficit. And the difference between Europe and the US is based partially, it seems to me, on uh, the overall, you said that, of course, policy mix, which is uh, much more expansive in the US than in Europe, also including the fact that the depressive effect of the war in Ukraine is hitting the European uh, significantly. But the European, under the circumstances, are more or less, I'm speaking under the control of the IMF persons, but more or less balanced or with a slight surplus when the US is still permanently, uh, if I may, in, in deficit. But <clears throat> there is also, uh, for questions, possible questions, the demographic issue in the long run of China, uh, which looks a little bit like uh, the Japanese, but much worse. When I look at the figure, I think it's absolutely terrifying because you did not have a period where there was a one child per household in, in Japan. Uh, but but, but the, the price to be paid for this policy in China looks uh, very, very big. But thank you very much for your concise uh, um, um, speech, if I may, and uh, for reserving the case for uh, responding to questions.